as the Buddha said, the most important external factor for gaining awakening is admirable friendship. The most important internal factor is appropriate attention. The question is which comes first. In the text they talk about having admirable friends first, because it's through having admirable friends that you learn about appropriate attention to begin with. But then, of course, admirable friendship is something you seek when you start to develop appropriate attention. So the two help each other along. But the outside influence is primary. Just think if we hadn't learned of the Buddha's awakening, would we be sitting here watching our breaths? Probably not. We'd be off someplace else doing who knows what. It's the fact that we've learned of his teachings through the long line of teachers that passed it down. That we realize it's a good thing to be sitting here watching our breaths as a way of training the mind. So we can develop appropriate attention. In other words, look for where our actions are skillful, look for where they're not. Encourage the skillful ones, try to abandon the unskillful ones. And then taking that principle deeper into the Four Noble Truths, trying to comprehend suffering, abandon its cause. Realize cessation by developing the path. Looking at our experience in these terms, in terms of skillful and unskillful actions, in terms of the Four Noble Truths, that's what appropriate attention is. And the main point of appropriate attention is, if you're suffering, it's coming from within. Always keep that in mind as we're living together here. We have a community. We want to have that fact help our practice. So it means we have to be good, admirable friends for one another. What does that mean? One, you try to set a good example, and two, you look for the good example in other people. It's all too easy living together that we see the faults and failings the weak points of other people. But we should learn how to look past that, or learn from their good points. As for their failings, you put them aside. You're not being asked to imitate everything you see around you. You're the one who has to make the choice what's worth imitating and what's not. And as for what's not worth imitating, just put it aside. staying with a John Fuang, I hear his opinions on politics, and I must admit I didn't agree with his opinions on politics. But I figured I wasn't there to learn politics from him. I was there to learn the drama, and he had an awful lot to teach in that area. If a John Fuang had been a political leader, he would have been a dictator. He thought dictatorship was the best kind of government. That was beside the point as far as I was concerned. What was the point was, what were the good Dharma lessons he had? What were the good things in his way of speaking, acting, the way he looked at things that I could learn from? So I picked that up as best I could. So as we're living with another, as the Buddha said, admirable friendship is finding people who have good qualities and learning how to emulate their good qualities. So that's what you look for. Years back, we had a person here who was very set on practicing restraint of the senses. And she got upset when people down at the house were talking. She, she said, don't they know I'm practicing restraint of the senses? And so I had to say to her, look, restraint of the senses means you're not going to get upset by what they say. You've got to learn how to restrain your anger, your aversion to the fact that they're talking. We can't expect to have a totally perfect, quiet environment around here. After all, we've got people 
And it's just people. We have the crickets outside, the bugs in the trees. I remember talking to someone who came here, his experience with meditation had been in hermetically sealed environments. And after his first day meditating here, he came to complain that the orchard was awfully noisy and interfering with his concentration. The sound of the bugs walking over the leaves and the sounds of the lizards running around the leaves, that was, his, that was a real irritant to him. And what the show is, is I mean, you can find something to complain about anywhere. And the same about with any people. You could always find something to complain. But is that the best use of your time with those people? We are in a place where everybody's trying their best, or at least trying, to live in line with the Dharma. And just that basic fact there should give you thoughts of gratitude toward them, that we have a community like this. There are going to be imperfections. As John Lee says, you can't expect everybody to be equal. Just even the fingers of your hand, he says, are not equal. If your fingers of your hand were all equal, you'd have a monstrous hands. So you can't expect everybody else to be equal in their determination or in their circumspection. But the fact that we have a supportive environment where the bottom line is not money, the bottom line is the training of the mind. That's something you should be thank thankful for. So look for the good in the people around you. That's how you can turn any friendship into an admirable friendship. It becomes a support on the path. So you can develop that quality of appropriate attention. When things are not going well, you don't say, it's because of this thing out there or that thing out there. It's because of something happening in the mind. There's something I'm not doing quite right. I mean, this is how the Buddha himself gained awakening. He looked at the state of his mind and said, something's not right. What am I doing? That was always the focus. What am I doing? And went from grosser to more and more refined levels of being not right. From the blatant problems of aging, illness, and death, he focused in more and more and more in his mind, to the point where he even, didn't even talk about suffering in those levels, just disturbance. What's the disturbance in the mind? What am I doing that's causing that disturbance? And if you can pay attention in here and ask those questions and look for those disturbances, that's what's going to solve all the problems. Because once the mind is not creating unnecessary suffering for itself, it's not going to suffer at all. You discover that all suffering is unnecessary. Pain is part of having a human body. A physical pain, but mental pain is not necessary. We're creating those things. Our old habitual ways of feeding, feeding off our thoughts, feeding off our opinions, feeding off our moods. Those are the things that are creating the suffering inside. So as long as your focus is there, then you're focused on the right spot for solving the problem. As John Cha says, if you're looking for something, always look for where, where you dropped it, where you dropped it inside. You didn't drop it outside. There's that story they told in the Philippines about a man who dropped something off the side of the boat one time. And so he waited until he got into port. And then he looked off the side of the boat when they were in port. He looked for the item he dropped. And they asked him, why didn't you look for it back there? And he said, well, the light is better here. So the light outside may be easier to see the faults of other people, but don't look there for your problem. Look inside for your problem, because that's where it can be solved. 